All right, so Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House. Just a beautiful song. Just really love this song. It's kind of one of those songs that only comes around once in a while, you know, a song this good. I mean, in my opinion, right? Um, it was written by a guy called Neil Finn, and uh, he was in a band called Split Ends before this, uh, before Crowded House, with his brother, actually, Tim Finn. They had that song, I've Got You. Um, you know, that real 80s song. So that was kind of his first hit, and um, and then he, I guess he quit that band, started Crowded House. Um, but anyways, like I said, this is just an amazing song to me, and the production is just so good on this. When you first hear it, you know, you know, you're thinking guitar, guitar, right? But then. Um, when you really start listening, as you know, I did when I was learning it for this tutorial, there's so many keyboard textures going on and um, cool sounds coming in and out all the time, right? It's just a great, great uh, job of production. It was produced by a guy called Mitchell Froome, who actually used to play keyboards with Ronnie Montrose in a band called Gamma. <laughs> so, and then he wound up producing some tracks on Flowers in the Dirt by Paul McCartney. So, you know, he's, he knows what he's doing, right? And uh, it really shows in this song. Um, and what I did in my demo is, it's, I, it's all guitar. I did it all with guitar, and I'll show you this later, but I used a volume pedal to, to get those kind of swells, you know, to kind of sort of try and emulate the keyboards. Um, and then I used, uh, you know, some tremolo effects and whatnot. Um, uh, for all those parts that, that you know faking the organ parts right anyways it's in the key of e flat i'm going to show you how uh it was played originally um nowadays he plays it very differently like i won't really get into that but he puts a capo in the third uh, third fret and he just plays it um like you know he would he would play it like with a capo in the third though like that Okay, so he plays it like with those C shapes, right? And I, I guess, I'm not sure why he does that. Uh, probably a little easier on the hand because it eliminates all these bar chords. But to try and stay authentic to the original recording, we're going to learn it in E flat with the bar chords, okay? So let's just run over the chords quickly. Uh, first chord is E flat, but we're going to take that third out and replace it with a second. So we've got an E sus2, E flat sus2. We're going to move that down and play a, a C sus2, exact same fingerings, just down one, two, three frets. And then we've got an A flat, just a, ma a major bar chord, and a G, major bar chord. And that's basically the essence of the verses, right? Chorus, we've got um, A flat, B flat, E flat sus2, C minor, right? The choruses, he plays the minor there instead of the the sus2 and that's pretty well it later on in the guitar solo he goes down to, to this chord which is just uh, D flat 7 okay and that's pretty well it for the chords um, now to get into the strumming um, the strumming and the intro is really key for playing this song okay? so uh, I'll just play it once Okay, so what we've got here is we want to hit that chord and try and get that second and then we're so it's like a down and then up focusing on the B and E strings and a slash right on the muted strings right downstrokes we want to kind of focus after the first one 
well we what got that second we're trying to focus on the first three strings the a the b and the g right right so that'll you know if you're just don't have that much experience in guitar that might be a little tricky And, you know, whenever you do strumming, you should always just have your hand going the whole time, right? You know, I've said this in a lot of my videos, right? Okay, and then we're going to drop that finger there, the little finger, and, and play the seventh there. So that'll be our next chord, right? Just take your little finger off. Okay, and then we're going to add our little finger up here, and that's going to be an E5-7 sus4 there, right? So we're just adding a little finger here on B, what is that, uh, 9, right? So we've got... And there's a little, little pull-off there, right? Sometimes you, know, you could strum that. It's a real feel thing, right? The deal is, is just uh, go slow. Okay, until you sort of get the feel of it and then speed it up. Okay, and then that strumming is kind of when the verse starts. Okay, it's kind of the same, except in the first verse, when we get to that G, we kind of do that ba da da thing, right? Which is going to be the G and uh, D5 and G5, kind of muting that A string, right? Okay, which is, it's like a G sus four, right? But the fingering seems to me I'm hearing that right okay so we've got from after the intro we've got the first verse and that's the only time that he does that thing on the G the rest of the time it's just straight like that and then the chorus Remember the minor in the chorus, C minor. Okay, and that's pretty well it. Um, and then we've got the the, the organ solo. Um, and they're all those, those those same chords, just in different orders, right? So just listen to the track, or even listen to my demo to uh, to kind of figure those out. It's really pretty straight ahead once you get the strumming. Okay, so now we're gonna move on, and I'll show you how I did the um, the keyboard fills. Okay, so now we'll move on to the keyboard fills, and uh, I'm just adding a tremolo sound here and I've turned up the delay so before I had like delay and um, I used the thing instead of a chorus I use a thing called a pitch change and I just go plus eight minus eight on that and I basically never change it because I kind of like the way that sounds right but this now is added the tremolo for the keyboard parts right and that first sort of it's like an organ solo I guess right? and what I did is I just did this okay so Okay, really, it's not hard, right? It's really basic, but it's getting the sound that is more key, right? So I, I really like that, that sound. So we've got our 
E flat there. And then we've got just G10, B11. And then back to the E flat note on uh, G8. Right? And then I'm going to lift this whole thing down here. Okay, just the third fret B and E. Moving that um, B string up one fret. Then. Right? Holding that note the whole time. And then just a G chord. With the sus. Right? The sus down to the third. Okay, and what I did is I doubled that up here, so... Right? Okay, really, it's you know, not complicated. It's that D sort of shape of the E flat, right? But I play it that way a lot of times. I'll bar there. Okay. And I also did, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, the volume uh, swell part, right? I kind of doubled it with that too so I I actually had like you know three or four different tracks <laughs> I kind of went a bit crazy on this demo right because originally I just went I was just going to do that and then I thought god you know I should just add this or I should add that and then I wound up adding all this stuff I made it kind of complicated to put the uh, demo video together <laughs> but it was fun man it was so much fun doing this Okay, so that's that part. And then we've got that ending part, which is more keyboards. I think it's Oregon still. Uh, and it goes. Okay, and I again, I just doubled that. I didn't do the octaves on I just I just doubled it. Um, and it's just, again, because we're on the, uh, the A flat chord, we're gonna play the A flat like that, right? But I'm going to do it that way, bar in here. Right? And try and keep those notes ringing, right? Okay, and then I'm going to play an E flat and add that note, right? And just go. Right? And then and that just holds for a second. And then we just keep repeating it. Okay, and that's pretty well all there was to that part. Um, of course, you know, if you're in a band with keyboards, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you're in a two-guitar band, you could you can fake it, you know. Just get these kind of crazy sounds, use lots of delay, <laughs> lots of reverb, right? And you can get away with it. Okay, so now we'll move on to the guitar solo. Okay, so the solo um, goes like this. Okay, that's the main part that you sort of hear the most, but there's actually two guitar parts here, okay, um, <laughs> and I'll show you the other one in a second. So we're just in this, this sort of major pentatonic shape of E flat, and we're going to go, we're adding that fourth there, right? So just going to keep a bar there, hammer on a D, 8 to 10, G10, and then hold that and play B11 to B9. And then it's just two, three. OK, 
Okay, we do it again. Except we go. Right? Okay, then we do it one more time. One, two, three. And then we've got this, this D flat seven. We just get it the first three strings of that. The A, the D string, and the G string. This is very Beatle-ish here. Um, and then we're gonna go. Okay, from eight G eight to G ten to B nine. And then we're gonna sort of double back and do it again. Right? So slide up there. And then we're gonna slide up. I'm gonna change my finger now too. Okay, B9, B11, E9. So. Now we're gonna go. That's G11 to G13 to B, uh, E13. And then slide those two down, right? So. Okay, and that's the main solo. Now, there's another guitar that's going like this. Okay, so what that is, it's just a harmony, right? To that, so it's A10, or A10, A11, to um, D8, and then G10, G8. Landing on D8. Does it again. One more time. Now we're going to hit this this D flat seven. Just E string, A string, D string. Kind of like that, right? Down, down, and then he goes. Sometimes I think it sounds better with just a single note there, but you could go. And then that's the end of that, okay? So that's the solo. Okay, so next we'll go over the, uh, the volume swells. Okay, so for the keyboard parts in the demo I made, um, I just did these volume swells. So what I've done is I've changed my uh, sound over now. I'm on my gain channel and I've got like a ton of delay. It's about 540 or so. Um, and I've got lots of, you know, reverb and stuff, right? So you just kind of kind of come in with your volume pedal. And over the verses, it's kind of that G kind of holds throughout the whole thing. Okay, and I put a second track of this just doing some different notes, so um, the kind of effect would be... Okay, and you can do it, you know, with a little cleaner sound, you can do it you know, using multiple notes. As long as you, know, you don't pluck too hard. What I did on the demo is I did a bunch of different tracks, right? So. And then. And then in the chorus, it's. 
those are the prominent notes, right? It's just F and G. experiment, you know. And then the end, I... You know, I was just kind of mucking around on those upper registers. And, you know, I got, I got that bit and I thought, I'll just double that, right? An octave higher, right? And, you know, when you use these type of swells, um, you can really hear how the guitar... has that kind of vocal quality about it, you know? Um, there's a song by Jeff Beck called, um, what is that called? Wish You Were Here, where he does this kind of stuff, and... Um, kind of sounds like... an opera singer almost, right? So anyways, that's how I did that. And um, I just included the, the swells for a... You know, just to show you the kind of cool sounds you can get by just by using a volume pedal, right? But I think most people are just uh, gonna wanna, you know, play it to learn how to play the chords, right? Which are pretty basic. Anyways, great song. Just like I said earlier, this is the song of a generation, right? Every once in a while, a great song comes along, and this is one of them. So, thanks, Neil Finn, for writing such, a, you know, a perfect song. All right, hope you get something out of this. Hope you enjoy playing it, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.